DeSantis' wife, Casey, is taking on some criticism from the media as she works to get her husband elected as president. For many, she's the brighter side to Florida's angry governor. For others, she's become America's Karen. <laughs> Tara, um, I think David's beaten you um, in terms of taking my breath away during a segment. Uh, America's Karen, David Jolly. Well, I called her. Ooh, I called her this. Uh, you know, Serena Waterford wannabe needs to cut it out. We see you. There's there's all kinds of names for her. She needs to stop trying to measure the great drapes in the White House and think that she's some kind of Jackie O reincarnate. Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, what would be the reaction if the three of us said that about a Democratic candidate's wife? Oh, I think that, let's see, there, there, there'd be some protests, I'm sure, outside. The, the Pitchfork store would run out of Pitchforks, Todd. Uh, of course, we, we would see anarchy, uh, at least on social media anyway. And this shows you just how pathetic some in this industry can be just to draw attention to themselves. Casey DeSantis, not too long ago, was diagnosed with cancer. Thankfully, it appears that she's beaten it. And she's the wife of a popular Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, who also not too long ago won an election in what used to be a toss-up state by 20 points. He won in deep blue counties like Palm Beach, Miami-Dade. So what's the criticism of Casey DeSantis? She's out there talking about issues that affect her, affect families in general, doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican, on the educational front, and that makes her America's Karen. And, and by the way, on this MSNBC segment, uh, they didn't discuss the fact that ACT test scores are at a 30-year low for U.S. students. That's what she's talking about, and that somehow makes her a Karen. So, look, th th this is why when, when people say, hey, do you trust the media? You think they're honest brokers? I get it's MSNBC, and they're hopelessly partisan to the left, but that wasn't even like an adult conversation that was going Going on. That, that was something at a sophomore year, if, if you've had one too many, uh, you know, uh, wine spritzers, uh, Zimas type of thing. And it, it, that, that's where we are at this point, Ashley. Zima, is that even a thing anymore? Yeah. Bartles and James. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, Joe, it's not the Thank first you. time. It's not the first time the media name called um, the Florida First Lady. Last month, the Daily Beast labeled her the Walmart Melania. So, you know, forget talking about the important aspects of what she's saying. As long as they can, you know, try and demean her in any way, shape, or form, you know, that's what they're going to do. But we do have to get to this. A New York Times piece is yes. calling out President Biden for failing to acknowledge his seventh grandchild and, Hunter, and Hunter's daughter. But NBC's Chuck Todd, he's stepping in to defend the president. Listen. I think we've all understand the personal challenge and, and, and concern and all of these things that the that the that the president has here. But his political foes are you see this and they're trying to exploit. They're trying. I mean, it is no doubt every day DeSantis or, or or Trump tries to use Hunter to beat up Biden. You know, if Chuck Todd wants to talk about a uh, personal challenge, he should probably look at that little girl being ostracized by this family. <laughs> Ashley, uh, th that sound you, you may have just heard that we all just heard was Tim Russert turning over in his grave. And I thought, uh, actually, I, I thought that Chuck Todd was retiring from Meet the Press, or at least being forced out. I, I guess he's still there. Uh, I didn't see it yesterday. But but that that's what we have now at this point, where you have the sitting president of the United States listening to his political advisors and saying, yeah, I only have six grandchildren, not seven. And even the New York Times and Maureen Dowd, who's quite liberal in her own right, uh, is calling him out for this because of how odious this looks, where you have Hunter Biden, who has made millions in China, Ukraine, through his paintings, because, you know, he's been a painter his whole life. Oh, that's right. He just started doing that. Uh, it won't, it, it is, is challenging the fact that he can't pay the child payments that are due every month. And the president and Joe Biden is saying, yeah, I speak to my six grandkids every day, but the seventh one that's very politically inconvenient, I don't speak to. Uh, that, that's where we are at this point, and nobody likes this, including the New York Times, except for Chuck Todd. He'll, he'll be there to defend the president until he's finally forced out the door over at NBC, guys. This isn't about politics. It's about human decency toward a four-year-old yeah. little girl. Joe Concha, thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all.
Please support MCAD TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.